forward to have more opportunity like this to come as God's people to share our love with one another. I want to introduce to you my series for the month of November. November is known to be the month of Thanksgiving. And then we are going to study this text. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37 will become our base uh, for uh, the month of November. And we will be talking about becoming a good Samaritan. Just for today, I want you to remember this. Christianity without compassion is useless. I want you to remember that. A note to write. Any religion, religion without compassion is useless. So, because we are Christian, I want to say Christianity without compassion is useless. So, my brothers and my sisters, the text that we have read is a very familiar text, the Good Samaritan. In this text, you are already familiar about the three personalities, the three characters in the text. We have the religious leader. We, we have the temple worker and we have the good Samaritan. Jesus is teaching. Somebody comes and asks Jesus Christ, what is it that I need to do so that I can matriculate into the kingdom of God? What is it that I need to do for me to get saved? What is it that I need to do? And Jesus began to uh, ask him, do you know the law? He said, I know the law. He explained the law. And, 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 and then uh, 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 Jesus gave this uh, a parable about the Good Samaritan. And this man came to Jesus Christ in an attempt to try to trick Jesus Christ. But what caught my attention is the religious leader, the temple worker, and the Good Samaritan, they all saw the man who was beaten on the Jericho Road. They all have seen. They have saw the man. See. The religious worker saw the man. And he passed by. The temple worker saw the man. And he passed by. But the good Samaritan saw the man. But he just did not see the man. He did something. So there is something about what we see. Because you see, we can either see through the eyes of judgment. Or we can see through the eyes of mercy and compassion. Because you see, the religious leader saw the man, but he saw the man through the eyes of judgment. Perhaps he judged him and said, look at that man. Why is he there? He blamed the man for being there. Perhaps in his mind he began to say, he made poor decision. If he had made good decision, maybe he would have not been in that predicament there. Likewise, the temple worker also saw the man, he saw through the eyes of judgment and prejudices. He blamed the man for who he, and, 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 and then not only they blamed the man because the man was there, they were more concerned about themselves, so they had this kind of judgment. They said, no, 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 they had a lot of excuses why they shouldn't stop and help the man. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ is teaching us that the good Samaritan saw the man through the eyes of mercy and compassion. If we are going to become good Samaritan, may God give us the ability to see through the eyes of mercy and the eyes of compassion. By the way, compassion is evident in various aspects of our Christian beliefs. Jesus Christ himself taught about the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We see this uh, emphasis of Jesus Christ on the kindness of God. The emphasis on the act of love, on, on the compassion. In fact, compassion itself is part of the nature of God, my brothers and my sisters. Now, I know many times we focus on doctrine. Many times we focus on personal salvation. You know, we waste more energy on doctrine. Right now, let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. The world does not need our theology. The world needs our compassion. Whether your theology is right or your theology is wrong, the world needs to see compassion and love. We are called to become an extension of God's presence in the world. We are called to be an extension of God's presence in the world. 
Yes, we can focus on rituals or personal salvation. You know how many times we are more concerned about my relationship with God. I am saved. I am saved. And then we forget that salvation is also the salvation of the community. There is also something called the salvation of the community. God is concerned about the world. Because God did not just love one individual. God so loved the world. My brothers and my sisters, Christianity is a religion of compassion. And compassion is central to our faith. How do you see? Do you see through the eyes of judgment? Or do you see through the eyes of mercy and compassion? It was compassion, it was mercy that made the good Samaritan to go an extra mile, to forget about himself. He took the risk to do what you and I would say that was dangerous. But he did it because he was motivated by mercy and compassion. He saw the man through the eyes of mercy and through the eyes of compassion. Can I remind you this morning that God sees us also through the eyes of mercy and compassion? Yes, my brothers and my sisters, where there is compassion, where there is compassion, there is healing. Where there is compassion, there is healing. The Bible says, Bear each other's burden. How are we going to love and say we love one another if there is no compassion amongst us? In our families, in our marriage, we need compassion. You know, there is something about compassion in your spouse. When you look at your wife or your husband through the eyes of compassion, you go an extra mile. Come on, somebody. Can I get a witness? Amen. Oh, yes. I love when you say Amen. Oh, yeah, there is something about compassion in relationship. And many relationships are broken today because there is no compassion. Because when there is no compassion, there is selfishness. People are more concerned about themselves instead of focusing on the other person. How we need compassion in our church, in our families, in our community. You know, where there is compassion, there is love. The Bible says love covers a multitude of fault. In other words, where there is love, there is compassion. Where there is no compassion, there is no love. We all have what we call a moment of weakness. No one is perfect. Come on, somebody. It does not matter how much you know. You can know the Bible from the book of Revelation, from the Genesis to Revelation, from Revelation to Genesis, it does not matter. We are all human, and we all have those moments of weaknesses in our lives. You know how you need people to stand on your side in your moment of weakness? How we need somebody to understand? How, many, how much you need somebody to say, I am with you, I love you? You know, one of the things that I always tell my children, I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you are. Call me. Call me. One of the things that worried me is when my children have done something and they try to cover it and they don't tell me. It pains me even more because I feel like they, they don't trust because I, I want them to understand my love is greater than your mistakes. It does not matter what you have done. You have to call me. I will shout at you later, but call me first. <laughs> Don't be afraid of my wrath. Be aware of my love and my compassion. You are mine. That it does not matter what you have done. There is nothing that will ever change the fact that you are my son. My love for you is unconditional. You don't have to do something for me to love you. And I have invested all my time and my energy to tell them that. And I continue to remind them. Even if you have done the most stupid, call me, call me. Call me. This is how God loves us. Because God always sees us through the eyes of mercy and compassion. So how we need compassion, my brothers and my sisters, we become good Samaritan. 
when we begin to operate from the perspective of compassion. So every day, as I'm challenging you, this week, begin to look at things with eyes of compassion. It will change your perspective of life. I'm telling you. It will change your perspective of life. The moment you begin to look at things with eyes of compassion and mercy, oh, you are going to set yourself free from being rigid. Even your dogmatic will change, my brothers and my sisters. You look at things from a divine perspective. Just try this week. Oh, yes. Try to look at the world with eyes of compassion. Even your understanding will be better. Just try. Try to become a good Samaritan. Move. Make a shift from the religious worker to the temple worker. Make a shift. Make a shift. Move away from the religious leader. Move away from the temple worker's perspective. Adopt the perspective of the good Samaritan. My brother is in need. My brother, my sister is in need. My brother, my sisters are hurt. I I want to be there for them. What is it that I can do to create a better place? What is it that I can do to make this place a better place? Oh, my brothers and my sisters, when we become good Samaritan, we fulfill the requirement of Micah chapter 6 verse 8. Because God has shown to us mortal what is good and what is required from us. What is it that God requires from us? Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. When you become good Samaritan, when you look at things with eyes, perspective of compassion, you are fulfilling the requirement. Because compassion goes with justice. Compassion goes with love. Compassion goes with humility. Come on, somebody. Compassion. Compassion. As we become good Samaritan. May God help us to start this journey in this month of November as we are looking forward to Thanksgiving that we will live our life from the perspective of compassion. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let all of God's people say amen. Amen.